This is the Module 6 test review. The directions read, using a whiteboard or paper, please go through this video. For each question, please pause the video, try the problem, and then resume the video to check your answer. Good luck! Number 1. The ratio of salmon to trout in the local stream is 1 to 4. If there are 800 trout in the stream, how many salmon are there? Sometimes kids uh, look at a problem like this and they're not sure if they're supposed to multiply or divide. So what I always ask them to do is set the problem up. I want you to notice that they put salmon first and trout second. So the ratio would be from salmon to trout. And so for the salmon, the first number is 1. And for the uh, trout, it's 4. There's one salmon for every 4 trout. And then we're going to find the equivalent ratio. Um, the direction, the next sentence says there are 800 trout. And the last question is how many salmon are there? So it's a question mark. And there are various ways to solve this. Uh, what I would notice is that to get from 4 to 800, I would multiply by 200. And if you multiply one term in a rate by 200, you have to multiply the other term in the rate by 200. 1 times 200 is 200. So there would be 200 trout. Number two, a 12 ounce soda has 180 calories. How many calories does each, each ounce of soda have? Once again, I'd set this up and I would put it as 180 calories over 12 ounces. And the reason why is because you'd calculate the calories per ounce as opposed to the ounces per calorie. And this is a division problem. We've talked about plenty of times before that that line right there, the fraction bar, is a division problem. So what this is, is it's going to be 180 divided by 12. Uh, and that's because we would divide each term by 12. Because I don't care about the number of um, calories in 12 ounces. I want to know the num number of calories in 1 ounce. If you notice across the bottom here, if I do 12 calories divided by 12, I get down to 1 ounce, which is what I want to do. So the, the math problem is then going to be 180 calories divided by 12. And of course, you'd be allowed to use a multiplication chart here, or you can just use long division. 12 goes into 18 one time. Twelve goes into sixty-five times. And I'm done dividing when you get a zero. So the answer is going to be fifteen. Now what is it going to be? Fifteen what? Go back and reread the question. How many calories does each ounce of soda contain? So it's going to be 15 calories per ounce. We uh, every time we get a chance to write a unit, we want to do that. It really makes it makes it proves that we really understand what the question was asking. All right, number three. Please read it with me, and then pause the video, and then try it. The ratio of dogs to cats in an apartment building is two to three. If there are 16 dogs in the apartment, how many cats are there? So once again, I'm going to set this up like I did number one. Ratio is from dogs to cats. And there were two dogs for every three cats. And the, the question reads, if there are 16 dogs, so that's going to be the top term. And this is kind of like last time. I don't know the number of, of cats, so I put a question mark there. Now, I could uh, do the same method as I did on number one, but I'm going to switch methods here just because some kids like to see um, alternative methods. This would be a really good one for cross multiplication. Cross multiplication means if you multiply diagonally, products have to be equal. So if I go this direction, I would get 3 times 16 is 48. And what that means is that if I go this direction, 2 times an unknown also needs to be 48. And I could use a multiplication chart, or just my common sense, or just division. I would do 48 divided by 2. That will find that unknown if I divide 48 by 2. And I can do that mentally. 2 goes into 48 24 times. So the answer is 24. Let me switch back to black here. It's going to be 24, uh, 24 cats. How many cats are there? 24 cats. Let's check out number 4. The ratio of blue beads, two green beads, and a necklace is 4 to 5. If there are 30 green beads in the necklace, how many blue beads are there? Once again, if you set it up, 
in fractions, it becomes pretty easy to see the math. If you don't set it up, it, it sometimes it's confusing about what to do. So I'm going to go back and read the fine print. It says blue to green. So I'm going to put my blue beads on top, my green beads. And the blue beads are 4 to 5. And that's going to be equal to 30 what? i got to read carefully. 30, it says 30 green beads. So that means 30 is my second term. And now I can see the math. How would I get from 5 to 30? I would get that by multiplying by 6. If you multiply the second term by 6, you have to multiply the first term by 6. 4 times 6 is 24. 24 what? It says how many blue beads are there, so that means it's 24 blue beads. Number 5. Chang uses 6 gallons of gas to drive 129 miles on the highway. If Chang gets the same gas mileage, what is Chang's unit rate in miles per gallon? Some kids don't know what this means, so we've got to go back and review what a unit rate is. Unit rate is a rate in which the second term is equal to 1. So if I go back, and if you, if you think, well, what does that mean? We'll go back to the original question. It says, in the original statement, Chang uses 6 gallons of gas to drive 129 miles on the highway. Uh, that, that's given to us in reverse order. We would always want to know the miles first. So it's going to be 129 miles for 6 gallons. And what are we asked to find again? We're asked to find the unit rate in miles per gallon. In other words, I don't care how many miles he can drive in 6 gallons. I want to know how many miles he can drive in 1 gallon. So I set this up as equal ratios, equal rates. Equivalent rates. Um, how do I get from 6 gallon down to 1 gallon? Well, I would divide by 6. And what do I do to the first term? I would divide by 6. So the math problem here will be 129 divided by 6. And I'm going to make just a little bit of space over here. And I think I can do that just, just a bit of space. 129 divided by 6. I have a suspicion this won't divide evenly, but that's okay. We've got skills. We can work around it. 6 goes into uh, 12 twice. Six goes into nine once. One times six is six. If you're stuck here, just remember something we learned before, which is you can annex a decimal and a zero. And let me wipe it a little wider. Six goes into 35 times. And I'm done because 30 minus 30 is zero. Now that's not 215. Remember when I annex that decimal and that zero, decimal's got to come straight up. Answer reasonably. If 215 would have been an unrealistic answer, 21.5. 21.5 what? 21.5 miles per gallon. Number six. In Mr. Smith's sixth period class, there are 14 boys and 16 girls. What is the ratio of boys to girls? Write your answer in the form of a fraction in simplest form. Now, if you did not read this last sentence, let's cross it off. If you did not read this last sentence, the answer you could write would be, well, it says uh, 14 boys to 16 girls. So you could write this as 14 to 16. And that's a perfectly reasonable answer. Except for this question, it didn't quite follow the directions. This question is asking you to write a ratio in the form of a fraction and in simplest form. So the first step might be to do what you did, identify it as 14 to 16. Then to rewrite it as a fraction with your first term over your second term. And lastly, it's to simplify it. 14 and 6 share a factor of 2. So the best answer would be 14 divided by 2 is 7. 16 divided by 2 is 8. The best answer is 7 to 8. Simply because, I mean, that's not the best answer. It's the best answer because that's what the question asks you to do. We have two more practice problems. Kari earns $9.25 per hour working at the local sports complex. If she worked eight hours on Saturday, how much did she earn? So you know that she works, she makes $9.25 per hour. So you could write that over this, one hour. And we want to know how much she would make, which means I don't know, but we want to know how much she would make in eight hours. And so it should make sense that to get from uh, how much you make in one hour to how much you make in eight hours, you would multiply. By 8. 
So the math problem here will be 925 times 8. And for those of you that forgot, I just set this up as, I kind of just do it as 925 times 8, and I'll do my decimal at the end. 10 to the 5 is 40. 10 to the 2 is 16, plus 4 is 20. 8 times 9 is 72, plus 2 is 74. And 7,400 would be unrealistic. It makes a lot more sense that it's $74. The decimal should have been here between nine and between the 9 and the 2. You place your decimal by counting over 1, 2 places. So you move the decimal over 1, 2 places. It's $74. All right, we're on question number eight, the last question on this test review. Question number eight reads, a box of 20 whiteboard markers costs $5.80. What is the unit cost for each marker? I think what a lot of kids would struggle with is what a unit cost is. Unit cost is the same thing as the unit rate. I don't care about the cost of 20 whiteboard markers, uh, although I need to use that information. I care about the cost of one whiteboard marker. So you'd set it up as your money, $5.80, on top of your number of markers, 20. And um, the real quick way to do this is to say, well, I know that this means division. I'm going to solve this by dividing uh, 580 by 20. And 20 goes into 58. Decimal comes straight up. I should even say 20 does not go into 5. So my answer is going to be $0 and something cents. 20 goes into 58 uh, almost three times, but it's just 2. 2 times 20 is 40. 20 doesn't go into 18, so I dropped the zero. Uh, 20 goes into 180. Um, I would just think of this as 2 goes into 18 9 times. 9 times 0 is 0. 9 times 2 is 18. So I'm done. The answer is 29 cents. It's not just 29 cents, though. $0.29 per marker.